What's going on guys? Today we're gonna to have a really serious conversation about starting a business and some of the things that I was planning on and some of the things that I have moved away from. Like the rental car business, I think was really good for me in regards to paying attention to business. Because I once, you know, I knew, cause I documented it on the Kill Switch Chronicles, the whole process, the buying of the cars, showing the cars and all this other stuff. And that was a business that it was really hard to get intimate details on because everyone on social media was talking about how great the car rental business was. I'm making all this money. And literally within six months, I found out it is one of the worst businesses and to be 100% illustrative, I was using hire car. The cars did rent out. In six months, I made $150,000, but the sheer cost of that car business, the repairs, the insurance. And the thing is, the business looked really, really good on paper. It looked really, really good on paper. But the thing that was missing from the paper was the car renters. I had no clue that I would have 20 people arrested for keeping my car, ignoring me, and not paying. And they just simply did not want to bring the car back. They just wouldn't do it. Once again, this business was really, really good for me because it made me aware because after that, I decided to get into the credit repair business. And so what I did is I found some people and honestly, I didn't like that business. So I was like, we're not gonna do that. And then I was going to get into a moving company, which is a service business. And I said, before I do this, I'm going to find a mover, I'm gonna interview the mover, and man, I am so glad that I did my due diligence on that business. I went really, really deep, because let me explain to you what was happening. When I was talking, this was just months ago. This wasn't years ago. This was just, I would say, June. June, July, it wasn't years ago, it was just months ago. And the trucking market, because I knew I was gonna to need to buy a truck, and I was looking for a truck. Now, to get a new truck, was gonna cost me $128,000, right? And to get a used truck, the used trucks, the moving trucks were going between 89 to $100,000, even if they had miles on them, they were used, it was just like, and I would call up trucking dealerships and it would take them two, three, three four times, four weeks to get back to me because they just didn't have the inventory. And that right there, I was like, okay, what does this remind you of? It reminds you of the phase that you went through the car rental business. If you go ahead and buy one of these trucks now and you set up this business, that's not gonna be making money because once again, the housing market, what's the biggest issue with the housing market? We don't have a lot of inventory. So housing is down. A lot of people are not moving. Apartment moves are still going on, but I just really, really, I, I on the paper, it looked good. On paper, it looked really, really good. But I was like, okay, that's paper. We've been through that before. We know that just doing this on paper without getting some real world experience and some insights, that's a disaster waiting to happen. I went ahead and literally counted how long it took these truck dealers to get back to me. And I said, you know what's gonna happen? You buy a truck at these inflated prices, the prices are gonna crash. Today, before this video, I went online, to look at the prices of used trucks. I've been, I was finding trucks for 40, 30 and 40 and 50. The prices of these trucks have crashed. So if I had paid $128,000 for a truck, right now it would be worth about 80 to 90. And you wanna know why all these trucks are available? I'm gonna tell you why. Loads have dropped down. There aren't loads for box trucks. There aren't loads for semis. I was watching a video today. He said that the load board, which is where a lot of people go to get jobs, has dropped by 70%. And uh, the guy that I consulted with, who was having the moving company, we're in the same office complex. I've noticed he is nowhere near as busy as he was last year. He's just not. So. Because I did my deep dive and I, I, got, I got away from the paper. I got away from the paper, right? And I did my deep analysis. I made a very good decision not to get into the moving company, not to, to buy the truck because 
you know, I was ready to do it. I was like ready to do it. But once again, all of these problems, all of these problems at the beginning, they were like little red flags. It's like, hey, you see me waving? I'm a red flag. And right now I am so glad that I did not buy a moving truck, that I did not start a moving company, that I did not get my moving license. Because here's the thing, starting a successful business means starting a business in a lane that's wide open. I would have been like, moving is probably gonna come back and the bigger, more established companies that have labor jobs, they're probably still doing labor jobs where they just send a crew of men to do labor and they get paid for the labor. But to start a brand new moving company in this economic environment would have been my second largest business decision mistake ever. It would have been epic because I would have been talking, hey, this is Glendon. I'm getting ready to start a moving company, man. I got the truck, I got the office, I got me some movers, we're getting ready to rock and roll. And it would have been an other disaster. Complete, complete disaster. Shout out to the car rental business because that made me do a very deep dive, made me get away from the paper and made me really, really look at this business from a different standpoint. It made me look at this business very differently. It made me look at this business with a greater level of detail, which saved my booty. Because right now, I still have one, two, three cars from the rental car business. And right now, and the guy that I did the moving, because I met him, he, he let's say he, he has a moving company in the same office complex where I were in the office. And every time I go to my office, not one, but both his moving trucks are still there. And like I said, I used to, when I was doing the car rental business, I used to see the guy, I'm not gonna mention his name, I used to see him all of the time. I have not seen this guy in months. I have not seen him in months, which lets me know his moving business has slowed way down. And this is an established mover with a truck, with clientele, with clientele. and his business has slowed down. And this is something else too, where I live, a lot of people have moved out of this building. A lot. I mean, a lot. Because uh, the parking deck is, you know, at one point it was really, really hard to find guest parking. But typically on the weekend, I came in a Saturday like 7.30 and there was like seven empty guest park. Like that didn't happen when I moved in here. The guest parking was full Monday through Sunday. It, it was always crowded. It was always hard to get in. and now it is very different and it's very interesting because I know I keep saying this. We may not have a recession in 23. I know, I know, I know. I keep saying this because trucking is down. The load board's down. We, we have a lot of economic indicators that are saying that we're moving in a recession. A recession. There are many people who say at the moment we're currently in the recession and Maybe we are, maybe we are. I don't, I, well, once again, I'm gonna keep reading the numbers, I'm gonna keep looking at it. I know officially, from the official standpoint, we're not in the recession. But, you know, with the American dream of starting a successful business, I'm not gonna make the rental car mistake twice. It was a big wake up call, it was big information to me. I know a lot of you enjoyed the Kill Switch Chronicles and the crazy hijinks that happened. And no, I am not going to start a trucking company in this environment. I literally watched this guy, he made this video and he's a truck, he's a dispatcher. He, he does something in trucking. He said low board rates were down 77% from the same time last year. That's huge, that's huge. And I wonder what's going on with the moving industry because like after I did my due diligence and I just looked at the market and some just said, I called up eight trucking dealerships and none of them got back to me anytime quick and none of them had inventory because this this was one of the things you could like go ahead and put some money down and order a truck and it would be coming in June and like right now there's a bunch of trucks on the market. There's a bunch of box trucks. There's a bunch of moving trucks. There's a bunch of, uh, wait a minute, there's a bunch of box trucks. There's a bunch of semi trucks. There's a bunch of moving trucks. Why are all these trucks on the market? Because the owner operators have turned them in. 
They've sold these trucks, so they're trying to sell those trucks to raise some cash. And once again, you know, I avoided what I feel would have been another disaster. It just would have been another disaster because like with the credit repair, that right there, there was a guy here on YouTube by named by the credit game, his YouTube channel's gone. He got in trouble, the government came after him. I'm like, all right, staying away from credit repair, staying away from moving companies and I also thought about doing a physical goods business. And then I, I really thought about that. And I was like, okay, you do have a lot of experience with physical goods. Sold for many years on eBay, sold for many years on Amazon. And I was like, then I kind of went and did some research about the moving business, would not touch it. Most of these places have their auctions online. And that right there could be quite interesting, could be quite, I don't have any skill sets for buying auctions online. I, I know nothing about that. And that would have been another disaster. Once again, as I sit, sit back and I do my analysis, and this is why I think the YouTube automation thing is so huge, because you can go ahead and literally do this business from home. You don't, you know, even though you're hiring people and they'll be in different countries, it's not like you gotta go out and get in an office. And uh, I really, really started to think about what am I good at? What works well? And this is where the whole revamping of the YouTube channel, the revamp of the content, the revamp of the training, all this came from because that's something that I'm good at and I have a record and I made a lot of money and I can do this from the comfort of my own house. You know, one of the things that I've been doing is making very, very good decisions. I was in the market to get a condo and I really, really looked at the condo market. I was visiting condos. There was one bidding war that I was that I was participating in. And then I called up my real estate agent and said, you know what, just withdraw me from that. And he said, there ain't no need because they went with the highest offer, which was like 150,000 more than what you offered. I said, no problem, good, I'm out. And I'm paying attention to the signals to the little red flags that are waving and I'm making some pretty, pretty good decisions because here's the thing, condos do not appreciate like standalone houses. Condos depreciate the least, the next depreciating thing that depreciates not as bad, well, it doesn't appreciate, excuse me, it doesn't appreciate as bad are townhouses. So a single stand, a, a single family home that's standing on its own land, those are the fastest appreciating real estate assets. And I'm just sitting here like, you know what? This is what we're gonna do. We're going to pause on everything and then we're going to work on our business and then we will revisit this stuff six months in the future. And there are some businesses that I'm getting ready to start that are more in line with who I am as a person and the things that I do. So there's a lot of stuff that I'm getting ready to do. There's a lot of stuff I'm getting ready to build. And honestly, you know, this, this, this high rise experiment is pretty much over. I was gonna break my lease to move into that condo. And I have a feeling that three or four months in the future, I will be breaking my lease and moving into a house because I need more room. I need more room and um, yeah, so, the restart is consistently going on and I feel really, really good about the decisions that I've been making this year. And there, there's so much stuff that's gonna happen. There's so many things that's happened. Cause like right now I would be, cause if I had started the trucking business, the moving company business, we'll start that in August. So it would have been August, September, October, November, December, January, February, March, April, so we've been 10 months into this and I would have still had these cars that were selling from the car rental business. And I just have a feeling that that first year would have been horrible, just terrible, terrible, terrible. And I, I sit back and I am refreshed and I'm overjoyed that I did not make that decision because once again, there's a lot of people who are getting in trucking, they're buying trucks, they're going ahead. Uh, bless you, God bless you. And one of the things that I'm finding out is for me, the best business that works is a single person business, the organics of what I do and being a creator. That just works really, really well for me. There's gonna, and th this is one of the things, I'm getting ready, like I said, I'm getting ready to do some new businesses, 
but I'm not going to announce what these new businesses are on YouTube. I'll tell my students in the training. Now, why am I taking that tack? Once you go ahead and put something on YouTube and social media, the business becomes flooded. People start running to the business. People start flocking to the business. And I've got some business models in mind that in my opinion, they're not crowded, they're not saturated, they're not flooded, they're somewhat difficult to do. And I'm gonna get into them because there's things like, once again, I gotta create my LinkedIn profile. I took down my old LinkedIn profile because that thing had been up for years and I had a lot of connections with folks that I'm not in business with anymore. So I gotta set up a new one of those and we're gonna get into some heavy, heavy, heavy activity as we build out these new businesses, as we get into the framework and the artwork of the new training as we get into there's so much that's coming up there's so much that's coming up there's so much that i'm getting involved in there's so much i'm getting ready to do and i should advise you to be really really careful with whatever business you're getting into and to do a lot of due diligence right now there's a bunch of people who are piling into the airbnb business now I will say Airbnbs in the right location are probably doing well. However, what do we have? We have recessionary pricing pressures going on at the moment, which literally is going to impact everything and everywhere. Right here, I'm in Atlanta. I've did the research. Atlanta's like, the Atlanta area is the fourth most visited area in the United States. I did not do that until I did the research. And we have a ton of crashed Airbnbs. There's this regular house. I think I put it on my community page, a regular house that is furnished and they want 8,500 bucks per month for it. And I'm just sitting there like, you want 10 months is 85,000, right? At two more months, it's gonna be 17,000, $100,000 to rent a regular furnished house per year. Number one, the people who can afford to pay that kind of money aren't, aren't gonna do it because they can afford to get a house if they can find one. And I'm just seeing the cascade of many bad business ideas. Now, fortunately for me, the car rental business, which was a bad business, and because I run a holding company, thank God I run a holding company, I'm not gonna lose any money. I'm not gonna lose any money. It's going to actually give me tax benefits for not one, not two, but three years. And the third year, it gets interesting. It gets really interesting, but I'm not losing any money, but I lost a lot of time. I lost a bunch of activity dealing with these people. But as we go forward, as we begin to build out on some stuff, I've got some great training that's coming up from May to December. And I think it's starting to speed up because uh, I've been working out in the gym. I've been getting my strength back. I've been getting up early, I've been drinking my protein and uh, we're, we're starting to rock and roll. I'm beginning to get into a different vibe here, a different perspective, so to speak. Because right now I am 100% patting myself on the back that I did not get in the moving business. I did not get in the moving business and it is like literally crashing around us and you know as we go forward in life and we make these decisions and we come up with certain ideals and certain elements we make really bad decisions or we make really good decisions and once again i've said it here on youtube you know a lot of people who were really helpful or really supportive it's like it didn't really fail but you didn't make as much money as you wanted to for me, compared to my other businesses, that was a business with complete failure. Even though I didn't lose money because I'm getting my tax money back. Oh, and this is something else too. This is something else too. When you're out for business credit and you're filing your taxes and these institutions make you fill out a 4506-C, the Internal Revenue Service can be quite funny. Uh, one business credit thing, I had to wait three months because the Internal Revenue Service did not want to let go of my taxes. And you know, that's gonna be some completely wholly different training because I have learned a lot. I have learned a lot, a whole bunch that I'm going to put in the training to advise people what to do and what not to do. Because I have been in so many conversations, I've been talking to so many people and I finally got my tax returns rendered to the institution and they approved the line of credit. And it was just like, email after email, email after email, set up after, I was just like, what is going on? And once again, this will be part of the new training that I'm gonna set people up 
teach you how to do this stuff and how to make it much, much simpler. Because once again, it's May, right? And right now we have the productivity course. And let me explain to you why I'm doing it. Last month was the money course. This month is the productivity course. I am putting things out that I know people need. I know you need this. I know you need to go through this training. And then next, you know, probably not even next month because I'm gonna be finished with the productivity course by this weekend. And then next week we go ahead and start some other stuff. So I advise you, go below, get into the productivity course, get into the money management course, and just get prepared because the car rental business has helped me in many regards to see the future, to see the things that you need to make, to make the choices. Like right now, there's a litany of people on YouTube making go to mid journey, create digital art and throw it on Etsy. In a few months, the amount of digital art that's going to be on Etsy is going to be simply ridiculous. And it's going to be one of the worst businesses you can get into because it's going to be so crowded. There's going to be plagiarism. It, it just, and I'm just sitting here like, okay, so the, the car rental business has raised up my higher level of acuity where I can look at the business model and I can see it because like I saw it with the truck, the, the moving company business. I saw it with another business I'm not gonna mention that I was thinking about getting into. And now we can go ahead and start to cook and we can start to create. So go below, get in the productivity course, go below, get into the content creation course because we have a lot of stuff that's getting ready to cook, that is getting ready to be deeply, deeply elevated. My name is Glendon Cameron. I will see you guys in the next video.